Hello, Seeker. Now, don't feel alone here in the new age because there's a Seeker born every minute. I want to talk about psychedelics. Um, I think before I go into psychedelics, I really have to talk about what's been happen happening with marijuana. Um, I'm really grateful that so many states have made it legal, that it started with the medicinal marijuana, which I totally approve of. The medicinal uses of marijuana haven't even been tapped yet. I got one of the first medicinal cards in California, probably in the 90s. And uh, up till recently, I had one in Colorado. It's worth it not to pay the huge taxes on it. Um, I am grateful to see that um, they are using psilocybin cubensis mushrooms to treat uh, smoking and PTSD. And I understand um, also I've heard it be being used uh, to fight alcoholism. So uh, seeing the medicinal uses of psychedelics is great. I mean, it will eventually be getting around to being used for recreational purposes. But let's start with the medicinal uses. And let's start with mushrooms because uh, I've only known two people in all my experience who ever had any kind of a bad experience or a bad trip with mushrooms. Uh, it just doesn't suit some people. But it's certainly easier on people than uh, LSD, which is much more likely to give you a bad trip. Um, the group consciousness is always crucial in a party setting. I, uh, I don't really like to party with people who are drinking. Um, I don't, I, I, I am fine partying with people who are getting high. I'd much rather be in a car with someone who is driving who is high than who is drunk. Uh, that's not saying I'm advocating driving high either. Um, in my parties, most of us were doing psychedelics, and we would usually all be doing either shrooms or acid, depending on what was available. Um, we would set our music up so we had our records all ready to go, you know, planned out all the Ravi Shankar, you know, for when we were deep into the trip. Um, we didn't have much in the way of snacks, really, because you didn't really eat a lot when you're on psychedelics. Um, didn't really have an appetite. Uh, we had the incense set up. What you're listening to right now is a combo I came up with, I have no idea how I came upon this, of Gregorian chants and whale song, probably humpback whale song, which when combined, uh, make a very interesting auditory experience, especially if you were on psychedelics. Um, set and setting is so important when you're first doing psychedelics. Um, you definitely want to be in a place where you feel safe with people who you feel love you, ideally. Um, set and setting is everything. The state of mind you go into it with. We got to the point where when I was preparing to do a trip, um, let's talk about isolation tanks. I, I don't want to digress here, but... Um, it got to the point where I had seen a movie called Altered States with William Hurt, God save him, uh, who uh, the idea was to go into an isolation tank and using psychedelics at the same time. Now we had been doing psychedelics in a party situation, but the thing is um, you're still focused outwardly on the outward world. Uh, it, when you remove all stimulus, as you do in an isolation tank, also known as a, known as a samadhi tank, it's completely dark. You're floating in about eight inches of highly salinated water, so you float very high. You've got to be careful not to touch your eyes. You can get salt water in your eyes. Um, if you have a cut or something, you'll feel the salinity in that. But otherwise, there is no sound unless you ask them to pipe in music. Uh, but I recommend going in at first uh, with no sound at all and you float and um, you're not getting any kind of sensory input. So what I would do is first I'd do a regular workout at the gym, I'd run, lift, um, 
and then come home and do yoga about 45 minutes of hatha yoga to loosen everything back up not really eating anything you want probably want to go on an empty stomach especially if you're doing mushrooms um, I would do about an hour of Zen meditation to prep myself then I would time the acid <clears throat> it's usually about 45 minutes is what it would take to come on I would time it so that I would go into the isolation tank at uh, altered states in Hollywood just about as at, at the time I was coming on so I did the, the maximum experience they would leave you in there about a, an hour and if you asked to be you know if they didn't have anybody scheduled after you uh, you could ask them to leave you in like an hour and a half so they'd leave me in like an hour and a half and uh, the experience itself is difficult to explain in words um, it's like trying to explain any kind of psychedelic experience except that it is magnified uh, a hundred or a thousand times because it is completely within it is it is only you there's nothing there uh, like Yoda said it's only what you take with you there's nothing in that cave but you and that can either be great or it can be terrifying it depends on who you are and therein lies the point of why people have a bad trip some people should not should not ever take psychedelics until they've dealt with things because if you're hiding something from yourself if you're running from something or you have a guilty conscience or oh, that's gonna come right up first thing so that's why some people have a bad trip others they look within and they like what they see oh god it's <laughs> the the internet intruding into my life skip ads I think it's great that psychedelics are were first are, are first at first being used in a healing way that's a great way to approach it it will eventually be recreational once people get used to it people are only used to so many normal normal people are only used to so many states of conscience conscience consciousness uh, which is waking sleeping or drunk or slight variations on those three and that's about it and we know that being drunk is in a way a diminishment of the senses like huffing gasoline or sniffing glue uh, the high that you're experiencing is brain cells dying forever you will always be the stupid welcome to being high um, I was warned against that at an early age don't inhale things that are going to make you see stars in front of your eyes mom told me I know gasoline smells good don't smell it airplane glue no a little is a lot um, I never inhale things Honestly, any brain damage I've done is through legitimate drugs like marijuana or psychedelics, but not alcohol. Boylan's cherry soda, because they're out of Cokes, out of real Cokes from Mexico. H.O. in Mexico. Uh, I think Tim Leary would be proud of what's going on now, the way things are going. People are loosening up. They're seeing that alcohol is kind of bad for you as much as it is a human tradition. And we all kind of compete each with each other to see which nation can be the biggest alcoholics, basically. Um, I'm glad to see marijuana being so much more accepted and maybe nudging out alcohol and uh, cigarettes. Don't even get me started on that one. And now psychedelics are coming in, uh, healing um minds and bodies but especially healing minds because they're giving people the opportunity to opportunity to expand their conscience consciousness instead of seeing instead of getting high by having it diminished by losing brain cells by being drunk uh, you know being so drunk that you can reproduce 
has kept humanity alive, but uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing. Maybe we can change that. Uh, maybe you want to hook up more with people who you are tripping with that you are like-minded with. Um, eventually, we will get into tripping for fun. What can be more fun than the human mind, than the human experience, than the infinite universe when it stands before your eyes, when you are tripping balls? Um, I cannot highly enough recommend the experience if you feel that you are ready for it and uh, our time has come. <laughs>